from the scriptures and get into a boardroom and speak with a different language or look for a different context for who I am in that space. There will be utter confusion in my life. I've only got one life as you do too. And that life consists in Christ. Christ. Pastor Ibukun Abiodun Awoshika is a Nigerian business magnate, author, and motivational speaker. She's a wife and mother of wonderful children and ordained pastor with the Fountain of Life Church, Lagos, Nigeria. She's a graduate of chemistry from the University of Ife, holds MBA certificate from the alumni of the Lagos Business School, IESE Business School, and also global CEO from What's in China European Business School. Pastor Ibokun is a co-founder and past chairperson of Women in Business Management and Public Service, WIMBIS. She's a founder of the Christian Charity Fund. Through this faith-based organization, she works with hundreds of missionaries by providing them with medical, educational, and office supplies. So I'm saying to you, God has not finished creation. He started the process and invested the rest of his vision in the hearts of the sons of men. She's a fellow of the African Leadership Initiative and Aspen Global Leadership Network. She's a member of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group and currently the chairman, board of directors of the First Bank Nigeria Limited, Nigeria's premier and most valuable bank. Pastor Woshika is also the founder and CEO Cheer Center with companies within the group, which includes being the CEO of the Soko Cheer Center Limited, Furniture Manufacturers, TCC Security Systems, and she does all these and more gracefully and with poise in a way that only she could. So you look at me and you say, oh, she's a business person or she's a chairman of First Bank, or she's a director in this place. I'm not any of those things. I'm a child of God. That's all I am. I'm a Christian assigned in those places. Everything that you think I am is part of who I am, the one person that I am. So the Christian child of God assigned to the business place can only operate in the business place as a child of God in business. House of David, it is our honor and a great privilege to be hosting this great woman of God today. So would you please join us in giving her a resounding welcome and a standing ovation to the servant of God. House of David, Pastor can we rise up with a round? Come on, come on, keep celebrating Jesus. keep celebrating Jesus don't forget we're celebrating Jesus to you Lord be all the glory to you My redeemer, my strength, my shield, my hope forevermore, my beginning and my end, the mighty King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one that speaks and no one can change what he has said, my way maker, <laughs> the God of my faith, my provider, my great healer, my great nurturer, 
the I am that I am, the Almighty. I worship you this morning. I testify before these people that I am nothing without you. That all that I am and ever will be is because the greater one dwells on the inside of me. I ask you, Father, that you will come this morning and you will manifest yourself in this place. I'm a willing vessel, always willing and ready and fully submitted into your hands. Speak through me this morning, Lord. You know every man and woman, every child that is in this place. You know every life. You know that which their neighbor does not know. You know that which the husband does not know concerning wife or wife concerning husband. You know their heart cry. And you know the things they do not yet know. But because you know the beginning and the end, Father, today you will reveal yourself. And at the end of the day, Lord, we will know that we have been to the house of the Lord. I receive grace. I receive utterance. I receive the tongue of the learned. I receive a tongue that cannot be resisted. I declare, Father, that as I open my mouth, you would feel it. And that your presence will be here to deliver and to set free. And all glory will be yours and yours alone. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, church. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you to Pastor and Pastor Mrs. And uh, to the family of the House of David. It's, um, you cannot take it for granted to stand on any man's pulpit and preach to the people of God. People think it's a simple matter or that is prestigious and all of that. God's biggest, uh, biggest asset are his people. And if at any point you are in a position to have to influence those lives, you have a big responsibility. Except by the Spirit, you can do nothing. On the other hand, you can actually do damage if you do it wrong. And so for any pastor to yield their pulpit, they have to know what they're doing. Otherwise, they have a problem on their hands. But that's not the story of today. These people and I are kindred spirits. We come from the same house. We're family. Because we're children of God together, raised in the same house. And I'm always comfortable in my father's house. Because every church that is the church of Christ is my father's house. And maybe for some people you can take that for granted, but I can't. Because, you know, unlike some here, maybe you were born as a Christian. So all your life, you have been a Christian. Or you have been able to feel on your form when they ask religion, Christianity. And so for some, it really doesn't mean anything. It's just another added information. But I stand before you today, and I can tell you that I've lived on both sides of the divide. I wasn't born a Christian. I was born and raised a Muslim. My name is Belkisu. My great-grandfather, if you're Nigerians, it was the first person to go to Mecca in the city of Ibadan. In the days when they used to walk and ride on donkeys. The journey, I think, takes them about seven years or something. And then you stay there for a while. My family is convinced they have some Arab relatives that they know nothing about. But who knows? And, you know, I worked most of my early years very comfortable, confident, and proud of my Islamic heritage because I come from what you call Islamic royalty, from where I come from. If you get to Ibadan, I mention my family name, and you're in the Muslim circle, there's a lot of honor that goes with who I am. But I went to Christian schools all my life, and even there, they couldn't do much in terms of touching my heart. Oh, I studied RS and got A in Waek. It's just an exam. You cram, you pass, you deliver. The spiritual did nothing. It made no influence. I went to University of Ife and I was really troublesome on campus in terms of Muslims and Christians. I could not stand the SUs. I found them very boring and very unfriendly. And they got into trouble with me once because I was in a hall 
where there was a Muslim girl in a room filled with four SU girls, and they made the li girl's life miserable. And by the time I was done with them, we almost had a riot on campus. I'm just giving you my background so that this morning you will understand that religion is nothing, but Christ is life. And they're two separate things. So in case you have been caught in religion, I need you to understand that religion is a way of life, action, the way you decide, an identity you can bear for the rest of your life. But Christ is life. And the life that is in Christ is not about the title that you carry. So I, I don't care about titles. Even though I'm a pastor, I rarely ever put pastor in front of my name. Because I understand the sensitivity of my own assignment. And that's why like one of the, I never remember where I preached what, uh, clips you had. For most people, they think I'm a business person who happens to be a Christian. But I'm not. I'm a Christian who is assigned to the business place. They're two different things. What that means is that Christ is the center of everything that I will do in business. Every decision I have to make in every place where I sit is based on how it will impact my testimony as a child of God and my called assignment to draw men into Christ. Because every single one of us, the totality of the Bible is to reconcile men to Christ. That is the total assignment. If you read it from beginning to the end and you ask yourself that you have to write it in one statement. Everything. The journey of Abraham starting was the beginning of God trying to reconcile men back to himself. And we all live in different spaces because we are assigned to different places. I want you to look at the screen and take this screen as God's entire plan then I want you to envision a jigsaw puzzle and break up this screen into tiny pieces of the puzzle. And I want you to close your eyes and think about yourself and realize that in God's total plan, you are one piece of the puzzle. And in every single piece, he has deposited a portion of his grand plan. And therefore, when you look at a jigsaw puzzle, there are different parts of each one that touches others. And when one is missing, the picture is not complete because there's a gaping hole or there's a gap because one is meant to influence the other into their own purpose and their own assignment. And that's the responsibility that each and every one of us carries. Because the question is, do you have a sense of what your own calling is? Do you have a sense of why God has allowed you to have life? Because what is your life? The gift of time. Every man has a birth certificate that reads the minute he was born. Born on 24th of December 1962 at 1.05 a.m. or something. The day you and I will die, there will be a death certificate that reads the time of death. Died so, so, and so, and so at 12, 15 p.m. What is your life? Time. That's all. Because you can easily, if a man lives for 60 years, it's 60 times what? Times the number of days, the number of minutes, and the number of seconds. And you can get it to the last point. Because you have time of, death, time of birth and time of death. Now, what are you accountable for? The full utilization of the portion of time that has been assigned to you in fulfilling your part of God's vision. The question is, how much of that time do you efficiently use? Or how much of it do we allow to waste away in things that are unimportant and do not align with the goal and the purpose of God in our lives? It's very easy to first convince yourself that you are not important in the scheme of things. If the master picture can never be completed without your portion being fulfilled, it tells you 
that not one single one is more important than the other. Every single one has a different portion of the assignment. And you are only responsible for your part. Because as long as you fulfill your part, everything else will work. The Bible says, haven't done all. Stand. Why? Because all he expects you to do is the all that is assigned to you. Whilst you're standing, he perfects every other thing around you. Because that's his part. He's the glue that binds everything together. It's the reason you look at people, you meet them today, you have no clue what part or what role they have to play in your life. Like we shared on Thursday, one of the wisest things you will ever do is to have a clear understanding of the value of human beings and to treat all human beings with the utmost respect. And I do not care who they are, servant or master, children or adults, poor or rich, wretched or a king and a queen. As long as they have human life, God has a plan and you don't know them. You have a sense of who they are. But all you know about the next person is all that has been revealed so far. And what has been revealed so far can so deceive you. Because when you look at a man and his circumstance now, and you are judge his future by it, who are you? God, the designer of the universe, or the master planner of his life? How do you know that he will not wake up tomorrow and his life is totally transformed? The Bible says, in 1 Samuel, I think 2, 7 and 8, is the one that can take a poor, wretched man and put him where? On the throne. It doesn't take God time. For God, the Bible says, is a simple matter. To take the life of one and put on the throne. You know, I believe when my husband married me, he married a very ambitious young woman who wanted to build a manufacturing company. But all he could see at that point was I'd already started my factory. I had 27, 28 people working for me. It seemed like I wanted to do something with my life. But there's no way in all of that that he could have envisioned the rest of what my life has become and what it would still yet become. Why? Because there was nothing. I'm not chairman of First Bank because my father has the largest shares there or that I have shares there. No. In fact, when I joined the board of First Bank in 2010, I did not own one single share of First Bank. And when I say people are important, you better hold it as the golden truth. Because every person you meet along the path of your life, though they look like nothing to you, you would leave a legacy with them. Legacy of righteousness, of stupidity. And somewhere along the path of your life, they will speak for you or speak against you. So be careful. Why? That's why God says, what? Deal with your neighbor as what? As yourself. Owe no man nothing but what? Love. Because if you owe no man nothing but love, there's a certain way you will deal with all men. The wisdom of God is our guide for the life that he has called us to. And in learning to walk with God according to his word and his ways. You know, I have friends who have asked me before, why is everything black and white with you? Life is not like that. There are many gray areas. I don't know gray. You know, like I explained, that's why I gave you my background. I'm a Muslim that became a Christian. I only know white or black. I know if God says it, that's what it is. If he says no, then it's no. He's not making suggestions. God gives instructions. And whilst I might never fully understand or comprehend his instructions, the Bible says to me some things have not been given to me to understand. Albeit they are mysteries unto God and unto God alone. But he also says to me, they that know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. What is the knowing of God? The knowing of God is the trusting of God in absolute terms. It means that I do not fully understand, but I trust him enough to commit my life into his hand and know that because he knows what he's doing, everything will work together for my good. And therefore, I am not afraid to obey his word or his instructions. I'm not afraid to wait for him when sometimes 
it seems delayed or things are not working what do I need to know that I am doing what the Lord has called me to that I am in obedience to the Lord in my life in that situation that as the Lord says if you love me you will keep my commandment telling you and I that love is equals to obedience and therefore you cannot claim to love God and live in disobedience to him even in small things that the grace of God is sufficient to walk you and I through situations that seem most impossible and that will seem to want to compel us to compromise because in compromise you take God out of the situation the Bible says the eyes of the Lord does not see evil and therefore once you allow compromises into your situation God has no choice not because he doesn't love you not because he doesn't want to jump into your situation but you have created a place and a condition that is not conducive for his existence so he has no choice but to stand back and watch you sadly because how do you know that God really wants you to do well the Bible says he delights in your prosperity and mine the Bible says I lay before you life and death but God being the father that he is then says to you but you know what I know the answer so let me give you before you make a mistake even though there's a choice of life and death I'm saying to you the only thing you can choose here is what life that death is part of the option but it is not an option for you what does death represent there everything that is contrary to the Word of God so when we're talking about limits the things that limit us first are thinking our minds our ability to walk with God ability to understand his ways because when you understand the ways of God you will be bold and courageous you will be strong and you will do exploits because in that strength it's not your strength the Bible said let the weak say what why because the strength of the Lord is made available to you in that situation but why is it made available to you because you are in obedience to his word and in the eyes of men you look like stupid and weak you know for a long time even my own staff when I was starting my business I told some of those that were at the business on uh, business thing on Thursday when I was starting I had two principles I said to myself I was never going to sleep with a man to get a job and I was never going to pay a bribe people said to me I was a young idealistic 20 something year old that I will soon learn a business you can't succeed in business least of all manufacturing depending on contracts from companies but I made up my mind that was the way I wanted to go tough yes life is tough Jesus didn't lie to you he said in the world you will see what troubles so he knows but the same one that told you in the world you see trouble says you are more than a conqueror saying look there will be troubles but more than what you need to overcome every trouble you have you already have it not that you need to have it but guess what a man who has a wardrobe filled with money but who does not know or utilize what he has will be he will starve and he will be hungry so wherever you are whatever you need as long as you are a child of God the whole of heaven is at your feet available to stand for you and fight your battles I've been in business for almost 30 years on the 3rd of January 2019 it'll be 30 years I've been building my manufacturing group and my corporate career fully started in 2009 with my first board seat on Cadbury board where I still sit but before then the season of trying to prove those two things that I said at the beginning was not the easiest or the most convenient but don't forget I came to Christ late and I'd made up my mind that this truth I will live by 
and the Lord helped and gave me grace. There were many sad moments. When I watch a contract that I know we're better qualified for, go to a man who is willing to do deals. But I also learned that every single one that I lost on account of righteousness was one I could afford to lose. Until one day, I remember Pastor Bimbo and I, Pastor Bimbo Odeko, I have blessed memory. We're having a conversation and I was lamenting about one of these things that had just happened. I said, you know what? Pastor Blessing, we're not even going to say uh, if that's, they want to, uh, if they want to be corrupt in this thing that they can take their job. He said, no, we're not saying they can take their job away anymore. We're going to say, despite the corruption, we will take this job. So I said, eh. she said, yes, let's change the way we pray about these things. So that became my new mantra. So I had my first example. In fact, I was on holidays in America. I remember I was in Houston when my head of our security uh, door division called me for the Nigerians. You know, when you go to the banks in Nigeria, those bulletproof doors that you see at the entrance of the banks. I don't know. So many of you, have you been to Nigeria? <laughs> I can't ask because, you know. <laughs> So those bulletproof doors, that's us. And I've been doing it for like 20 something years. But you know, we keep it quiet because of the nature of the work in itself. And in the last three years, the company that was producing for us in Italy ran into trouble. And we bought the patent and took their stuff and set up in Italy, producing for ourselves and other parts of the world. Now, that's not even the thing. We had one of the banks called my head of that division, who is a Christian herself, and said to her, look, we want to buy 250 units. Now, so you can understand the context, each unit is about 2 point something million naira. So when you want to buy 250 units, multiply the numbers. So it was a worthwhile project. And the person said, but on each unit, you're going to add 250,000 naira that will be delivered to us. Ah. My people know they don't need to look for me for the answer to that. So she said, she told them, ah, sorry ma, but we don't do that in our own company. He says, what do you mean? I'm sure your madam is a businesswoman. Blah, 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 blah. All the other competitors who are selling to us are doing it. She said, I understand ma, but we, we can't do it. She said, go and call your madam. If I give me her number, she said, well, I can't give you her number. She's on holidays. But I'll call her. So she called me. So I said, call me. Why are you calling me? You already know the answer. Why? Do you need me to tell you something different? She said, no, ma. But, you know, the man, the woman who I spoke to, the, another man came who was her boss and insisted that I, uh, he wanted to talk to you. And I said, well, go and tell them we're sorry. But we can't do what they want. So after I finished the call, I dropped the phone. This anger came from within me. And I thought, Kilan, we Kilan, so. Why will anyone on account of unrighteousness take my land? The Bible says, wherever the soles of my feet shall touch, he has given to me for a possession. That, okay, Father, we will not pay this bribe, but we will take this job. So I was screaming all over the place, just settling the matter between God and I. When I had reached the place of my peace, I called, I said, we will not give up that job. So this is where I'm standing. I need you to stand in that place because you're the one in charge of that division and that should be your confession. The next morning, she calls me back and says she will not believe this. I said, what happened? She said, they called her back and said, are you sure you know this? And she said, I'm sorry, ma, we cannot do it. I said, eh. You know, you guys are very, you are very proud in this, your company, that because everybody has told me that we cannot buy any of the other models for all the outside locations. Only your model can survive in all the outside locations outside of Lagos. So we don't have a choice but to buy from you. So guess what? We did not lose the contract. Now, let's take the case study. I had an option. The fear of losing that much value will challenge me to make a choice and I can justify it 
and say, well, I will have plenty of tithe to pay. I can go back to God and ask for mercy. God will understand because everybody else is doing it. But we did not have to betray God and we still got the job. Yet, we could have betrayed and gotten the job, but what we lost would have been something that money could not buy. Every day of your life, fear will cost you to make decisions one way or the other. And every time you allow fear to push you out of the presence of God into unrighteousness, you have capped yourself. Why? Because you have taken God out of your situation. You have created a limit. Even though when the devil presents the case, he looks like making the choice for Christ is a limit. And making the choice against him is what opens the door for you. Don't forget he's a deceiver. Every moment of your life, you are making decisions. The totality of your life is the summation of all the decisions that you make every day. And those decisions impose limits on your life or they expand your horizon. So for like 15 years, it looked like I was slow. Like I was slower than my peers because I wasn't interested in doing certain things. There were painful moments for me, but you know, like David, I always found a way to encourage myself in the Lord. And one good thing for me was, I was in a church where I was being nurtured to stand on the ground of righteousness. So I got a lot of encouragement because my pastors were people who wanted to build a people of integrity and character. And that gave me the courage to continue. And then, when the season of testing and proven had reached a point where your master, who has assigned your portion of the jigsaw puzzle, of the master plan, knows you are prepared and ready because he has tried you and he has tested you, you will become as a wonder to many. Why? Because when it seems like you're moving like this, all of a sudden there will be exponential growth. Because who controls open doors? Who controls opportunities? Who controls blessings? The earth and its fullness thereof. The Bible says they belong to the master. Any land that God has not given you, even if man gives it to you, it will cost you pain. Any land that the Lord has given to you, 10,000 men cannot take it from you. Yeah. Having gone through that season, and by the grace of God, seeming to come out of it, I got my first major board seat. If you know, for the Nigerians, you know when we had the Bumioni crisis in Nigeria for Cadbury. Then Cadbury International brought two British men into Nigeria to try and rebuild Cadbury. And after three years of rebuilding the institution itself, they were now at the point where they had, their last assignment was to build a board of integrity, they called it. They asked six people that they felt they could trust within the country, giving them a list of various points that should be met, and told them to bring up a list of people that would meet those criteria. They came up with a list of 30. From the 30, they whittled down to eight, based on additional criteria. From the eight, they whittled down to six. When they got to six, they started making calls. That's when I got a call. I had no clue I was on anybody's list. I had no clue I was involved in any process or anything. I hadn't asked anyone. There's not a single place I sit that I've asked anybody for help or asked to sit. Not one. 
I, I stand on the pulpit of God and I can tell you that Jehovah is a rewarder. He owes no man nothing. Hallelujah. I got this call and I was traveling the next day. So I said, if they can meet me in the morning before I travel that night, fine. So these two guys came to my house and for the next two and a half hours, we had these long conversations and all of that. This was, I think, February. Anyhow, cut a long story short, a lot of processes and everything. And by October, three of us uh, at Edo Peter's side, Dr. Suleiman and myself, became uh, three independent directors for Cadbury. And the three of us still sit on the board till today. It was almost as if God's moment had come. Every year thereafter, I had a major accomplishment. This was October 20, 20, 2009 for Cadbury. By October 2010, I'd been appointed to the board of First Bank. By February 2011, I'd been appointed as chairman of the insurance company that was being set up between First Bank and Salam. Salam is the second largest financial services group in South Africa. So they had a joint venture company. And do I know anything about insurance? told the group chairman who asked me that, I don't know anything about insurance. Why do you want me to be chairman of an insurance company? He said, what you know is what we need. The insurance people will be there. But it's a startup company, even though it's owned by two multinationals. And we need a, a chairman that has startup experience that can build a company from scratch. They had a business plan that says we'll make profit in five years. But Jehovah turns things upside down. In two years, we were, a major, we were a profitable company. And God will draw attention to you because he will do the wonders, but you will be the benefactor. But only if you know how to trust him. That's where you take off the limit. Only if you know how to trust him and to walk with him according to his own word. The alternative always looks attractive, but it's, it's a ploy by the enemy to cheat you. Because it lures you into unrighteousness and takes you away from the miraculous. It gives you short-term limiting benefit that it can take plus more away from you later. But it tells you that going this way is too slow. Nothing is going to happen. But nobody can move mountains like God. Hallelujah. After the two years and the result, they immediately moved me from the insurance company to become the chairman of the investment bank. Me, I'm not a banker. My first degree is in chemistry. I'd spent all the years before them building a furniture manufacturing and security systems company. Which one is the investment bank? But when the hand of the Lord is upon you, he will grant you favor in places you cannot imagine. It will wake men up in the middle of the night and call you to their attention. And then you will go back to that God when you get those assignments. You see, the other thing about limits is you have to have courage to take on, if anything that you can do comfortably, that's not God. You don't need God because you already know how to do it. So when you do it, you say, ah, you know that I'm smart. You know, I went to this school. I went to that school. I went to this school. Good for you. But guess what? When you take what you have and you lay it at the feet of the all-knowing God and you let his own greatness come into who you are, he will do outstanding things. That's what it means by you will be as a wonder to many because they will not be able to explain it. They will find various explanations, but everything, I, I always have a good laugh when I hear all sorts. Oh, it's because she's from a very rich family. She's born with silver spoon. I'm not born with any silver spoon. My father is a professional man. I come from a middle class Nigerian family. What do middle class families do? They give you a good education. They teach you right and wrong, and they set you free to go and change the world. My father, the best thing my father did was he never reminded us that we were girls. He brought his girls up to think we were human beings and we could do anything we wanted to do. So I had no fear of most things. And I had no mental limitation of gender. So fathers in the house, please, I beg you, every promise of the Bible 
is for the sons of God. And the sons of God in this Bible mean men and women. Raise your girls up to know they can do whatever they choose to do. Two hands, two legs, one head, one brain. Ew. And for the guys, you marry a woman, she's your gift. You nurture her, you're a smart guy. Why? Because the Bible says she's your helper. The quality of help you get is the quality of the helper that you raise. If you like, keep your helper down. The day of help, you'll find no help. So, I was sent to be chairman of the investment bank. In three years of that work, God showed up. We did incredible things, part of which was Within that period, we fought to set up a merchant bank. We had to convince the group to allow us to. It was a battle because the commercial bank thought we were going to cannibalize their business. But eventually, we won the argument, prayerfully and technically. And we then went ahead to buy Kakawa Discount House. And the group decided I should double chair. I should chair Kakawa Discount House as I was chairing the investment bank. And we then merged the two together to form the Merchant Bank. And at the end of that merger, I was moved out to be the first woman chairman of First Bank of Nigeria in 120 something years. I don't belong to any Ogboni or cult. I don't belong to any power group. My father is not a power broker. But my real father is the biggest of the power brokers. And as he showed up at every place of my assignment, he made it impossible for anybody to ignore me. I'm only sharing this not for my glory because I have a test case that I understand of the ways of God. And because I can truthfully say to you, that where I am or what I have become or where I'm going is not because of me. It's because there is a God that I came to receive into my life after the journey of being ardent Muslim. And receiving Christ became the game changer in my life. But the real game changer was believing him and trusting him enough to follow him even when I didn't fully understand it. The Bible says, they that put their trust in the Lord, they shall be like what? That shall not be. The world we live in will challenge us every day. But that's nothing. When people ask me, what's the biggest challenge you faced in your life? I'm like, why am I dwelling on what challenge I faced? Do I know the challenge that is waiting for me tomorrow? If I'm here, I've overcome that, so it's not relevant anymore. So I don't focus on the challenges. I focus on the God that is bigger than every limiting challenge in my life. Why? Because if I allow his strength in my weak self, I will overcome every situation. But I need to know his ways. I need to walk with him. I need to understand his words and live by them. I need to submit myself into his hand. And God does not need my help. Because there are many times we try to help God by trying to do things in a way we already know is not God's way. But we think for now, where I am, I'm in a strange land. This is how they do it here. You're a child, you're a citizen of heaven assigned to the earth. The ambassador of Nigeria in Canada knows that he's Nigeria. No matter where you are, your citizenship has not changed. Your character and your ways cannot change. They have to reflect the God that you believe. 
and your ability to trust him only increases daily as you challenge yourself to wait for him in situations where you know you have done all because let me put a caveat don't stand doing nothing and waiting for God to do what you can do because God doesn't do what you can do he has enabled you and empowered you if you are supposed to read for your exams and you don't read you will fail ten times over and you will deserve it God is not going to show up there why he knows that you have ability but the ability requires application you must apply your ability to the exam you must prepare yourself the Bible says haven't done all so that we do not use religion as excuse for mediocrity or inefficiencies if anybody has to be the best at what they do it's the children of God why there's an excellent spirit that dwells on the inside of us when you manifest the grace of God and you're excellent where you are people cannot ignore you even if they want to it is that that you then pray for favor to activate so other people can see that grace and choose you over the other where there's a contest a lot of times our limits are self-imposed environmentally imposed because sometimes we listen to other people more than God someone says you who do you think you are you can't go anywhere that now becomes your meditation who has spoken when God has not spoken who is declaring what God has not declared who is God over your life you must always remember who you are remember whose you are remember who rules in your life and when the circumstance looks you in the face look that circumstance and say sorry for the non Yoruba speaking people you 10,000 of you or 10 of you cannot do anything if I walk into a business place where I'm looking for a deal if they don't look very closely or if they look closely they will see that my souls will come out of my shoes why the Bible says wherever the souls of my feet shall touch he has given to me for a possession I will put my feet upon the floor of that place and say father I possess this place they might think that I'm not qualified for it but I have possessed it in the spirit everything that will qualify me I will go and prepare myself to be qualified so that when I get to the place of competition technically you cannot eliminate me and supernaturally who is bigger than my God the world speaks limits to us in different ways but heaven tells us every day that with God is a simple matter and even though God says it's simple he didn't say it will happen every day every minute when you want it because some things that you want when you want it will kill you if you have it when you want it which is where I go but I keep going back to this trust your ability to trust God makes you know that even if you put all your effort towards something if it doesn't come through now lay it at his feet because me I always say okay God me I don't understand this one but the Bible says some things have not been given to me to understand I trust you and I accept your will at this point and I keep moving or trusting let me try and I don't know how much time I need to go I'm flying at 12 15 12 10 let me share a story of my son as I try to wrap up my first son he wanted to go to this school in England and the school is like a thousand two hundred and something years old It's the private school of the uh, Canterbury Cathedral extremely competitive to get into and I checked all schools and narrowed down that that's where we're going to go and my son said to me mommy why do you like Wala that the smartest kids that I know were not able to get into Kings I said only dollar me I don't deal with any other person's problem I face my own problem that when we do everything if they don't take you then I will know that that's not where God wants you to go Chikena 
we'll go and do something else. We'll go and face another school. So my son left me. So this day we went to visit the school. It was just himself and myself. As they took us on the tour around the school and everything, we had to speak to this woman that was in charge of our admission process. So as I was talking to her, I said to her, you know what, I'm trying to find one school for my three boys. That whichever school we pick for the first is where the other two will also come to. And she goes, oh, well, you know, a lot of parents register kids from birth. I'm like, eh, from birth. Ah, we were already little. <laughs> and everything. So they have kids that have been on their waiting list from, you can get into the school at 13 plus. So if they register you at birth, you would have been on the list for 13 years to even get in. Ah. So I said to her, I said, you know, I understand that, but I know that God has his ways of sorting things out for me and my children. So I know that God will do what he will do. That's what I said to this Oyibo woman. And she just smiled. I'm sure she thought, yeah, right. <laughs> so by the time we were done and all of that, we left. No, before we left, I asked her a question. I said, you know, if my son, my first son is taken, will I be able to move my second son here to in year 10? And she said, no, that because the class is complete from year nine, the only way you have an opening in year 10 is if one child drops out. That without a vacant bed, nobody can join the year group. I said, okay. I said, well, you know, you never know how God works things out. Just said it and left. The next day, we were getting off the train some three and a half hours from London, going to inspect another school. I went into the bathroom at the station and my phone was ringing. I finally got myself together, picked the phone and it was this lady. And she said, Mr. Awashika, your second son is 13 today, isn't he? I said, yes. Now, let me tell you, you cannot resume in year nine at the school except you're 13 by the day of resumption. And the school was already in session for three weeks. My second son was 13 on the day she was speaking to me, three weeks after school had started, which meant that he would not, he does not qualify. So she said, you're not going to believe this. I said, okay, what happened? She said, one child just withdrew from year nine this morning. Okay, no, but that's not the miracle. Listen, which one is my own that she's calling me? They have a waiting list. There are kids that have taken the exams that they have already taken the number and they have people that have passed that are on a waiting list. They have children that families of whatever. We don't have track record in the school. She had never seen me before until that day before. Never, no interaction. My father, my grandfather, nobody in our generation had gone to the school. So she, she said, you're not going to believe this. This is what happened. And for some reason, who does not know the reason? For some reason, we all discussed it and we thought we'll give you the first shot. I said, me. So I said to her, okay, you know what, Bev? But we weren't thinking of him coming out. We were thinking of him coming next session to year 10. And she said, well, Mr. Washika, I said, you know what? So I immediately called, uh, stopped and said, Bev, I'll call you back. Let me call my husband. See, there's a reason for authority in your life. So understand the order of God in every household. You might be the smartest, but the authority has a positioning that is Christ divine. So I called my husband. And normally I'm the one that takes those kind of reckless, yeah, let him go now situation. My husband is the more cautious, very conservative about those things. So when I called him, I'm like, Bjordan, guess what? This is what happened, blah, blah. He said, eh, tell us your exam. I'm like, call us your exam, okay? But we didn't plan. He said, don't worry. Let, let me just go and take the exam. So I called them back and said, okay, you know what? My kids are supposed to resume in school in Nigeria on Monday. So we're leaving the next day. But he would come back, he cannot take the exam now, he will come back next week Friday to take the exam. But I have one condition. She said what? The day we take the exam, you must give us the results. Because he would have missed a week of school and I want to be able to take him back to school in Nigeria if you're not taking him. She said, okay, that's possible. So we immediately reorganized ourselves. My second son who had been on holidays for six weeks had not read anything found some teacher to come and start teaching him for the one week while I went with the other two back to Nigeria. When I was in Nigeria and everything, I kept calling them and all of that, giving them my own terms and conditions as if I was the one in control. And then on the Thursday I arrived, took my son to the school on Friday to take the exam. 
when we got there they said I should go away that I should come back at about 4 p.m. they took him away to go and do all sorts of exams I started walking the high street of Canterbury I first went to the cathedral and they had a place where you could put a prayer point I put the prayer point then I started walking the street of Canterbury and I had this burden in my heart to pray in spirit I'm sure they'll say which one is this mad black woman but I was just praying in the spirit all over through then I went back when I went back they hadn't come back I waited and waited and waited then they came back this super school the exam that could have failed my son one particular paper that you had to be used to the British system and culture and everything and all of that to pass the system did not work they were too embarrassed they were too ashamed they didn't know what to do and as he was doing each exam they were sending it to people to mark because I had insisted I must get the result on that day and then they now came back the deputy head then came back and said Mr. Oshika you know I'm really sorry but he couldn't take the final the last exam we apologize I was saying in my heart apologize <laughs> okay the system did not work and all of that and it's a new system we just set it up I said don't worry don't worry it's okay it's okay and all of that I was like okay he said well he passed his good at English maths and blah 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 and we've concluded that even though he's quite young he was, he's the youngest for the entire year don't forget that everybody that would have come in would have been 13 before that date that we will take him hey. now let me now go to the real miracle don't forget we started with my first son this is my second son they have a policy in their school once you have a sibling in the school in the list of those applying you go right to the top because his younger brother now went in immediately a year ahead of him so by the time he was taking the exams to come into the a-level class he had a sibling at the school that put him at the top of the list anyhow my three sons have gone to that school we have a family record there may the Lord bless you keep you and perfect all that concerns you don't forget no matter what the devil tells you you can do anything that you want God is on your side and he can make it all happen God bless you